I'm on the road to Baku, Azerbaijan, and then north to the ancient Silk Road along the Russian frontier. This is the vast Caspian Sea basin with abundant energy riches that can be piped to the European markets for the balance of this century. Scala, a leading digital technology company, celebrates the opening of the Central Asian populations to growth and prosperity. And Azerbaijan is leading the region in the development of a knowledge economy that depends upon digital tools for success. I'm John Batsler. This is the John Batsler Show. I welcome Ambassador Terry Miller. He is at the Heritage Foundation. He served the Bush administration at the UN as ambassador and many other important posts. But right now, what is critical is that he can help us understand what he directs at Heritage, the Index of Economic Freedom by the Heritage Foundation, which is more than 20 years old and is a way of measuring all countries on many different categories. I am headed to a country, Azerbaijan, about 10 million people on the Caspian Sea that was once under the boot of the Soviet state and has been emerging from the Soviet crony practices very quickly. And the Heritage Foundation Economic Freedom Index picks that up in many categories. You can see movement. Uh, Mr. Ambassador Terry, a very good evening to you. For definition for the audience, what is the Index of Economic Freedom and what does it achieve each year for all the countries you measure? Good evening to you. Good evening, John. I'm delighted to be with you. Uh, the Index of Economic Freedom uh, is a tool for comparing economic policies in countries around the world. We look at 186 uh, countries. That's practically every country in the world and are able to get sufficient data to actually rank 180 of them. We're looking at things like the extent of rule of law in the countries, the extent to which they're open and participate in the globalized economic system. Uh, do they have free trade? Are they open to foreign investment? Um, how competitive is the banking system? We look at the regulatory efficiency uh, in the countries. Uh, do businesses have a relatively high degree of freedom to open, uh, innovate, and uh, even to close down sometimes, which is an essential element in, in achieving progress. Uh, we look at labor regulations. And finally, we look at the size and intrusiveness of governments. What's the tax burden like? How much of the gross domestic product is government taking up and spending on its own behalf rather than, than leaving with the people? So we, we rank countries on 12 cent separate categories uh, in these areas and average those, and, and that gets a final economic freedom score. You are providing for countries that have been lagging in certain transparency these many years. You're providing a breakout, I notice, in the Economic Freedom Index for countries making strides. You say huge strides. And I see Azerbaijan sticking out. So you're not just talking about the best. You're talking about relative movement in addition. How has Azerbaijan uh, achieve this in a year's time? What are they doing correctly? Yes, Azerbaijan is really one of the superstars um, in our index uh, over the entire history that we've, the 25 years we've been doing this. Azerbaijan has made the largest single improvement of any country that we measure over that period. They've uh, gone from a score of 30 on our 0 to 100 scale, which isn't very good, frankly, to a score of 65, uh, which is uh, in the what we call the moderately free category. Uh, so that's over the entire 25 history of the index. Uh, they're right at the top in terms of improvement in economic freedom. And then in this past year, um, uh, it's clear that that improvement is continuing because in the important rule of law category, uh, Azerbaijan again led the pack uh, over the last year in having the largest improvement in that category. So it's, it's not only that they've had great historical progress, but that's continuing now. My experience is that Azerbaijan is in a tough neighborhood, Terry. Uh, it's the South Caucasus, the Caspian Sea Basin, but it touches a number of states that are either hostile or suspiciously hostile to the United States, whereas Azerbaijan is a strong ally of the United States and, and NATO. So 
does is there a measure here of how you're doing in your neighborhood uh given that to have Iran and Russia and Armenia as uh, neighbors uh, yes, absolutely. And one of the main values of the index is that it, it allows uh, people and leaders in the various countries to compare how they're doing with their neighbors or, or with their competitors sometime. And uh, Azerbaijan, as you say, is in a very tough neighborhood, but a very strategically important neighborhood. Uh, Georgia has been a, a good performer in our index. And um, Armenia has uh, shown some significant progress as well, but not quite as fast as, as, as Azerbaijan. On the other side, on the eastern side, uh, the picture's not so pretty. Um, when you look at uh, Turkmenistan or uh, Uzbekistan, they're really lagging behind. Um, Kazakhstan has actually the exact same score in our index as Azerbaijan, but they've been on a decline recently. So uh, that's not a trend we like to see. Yes, and how how to read this over the 25 years that these countries are all – do they read their progress from your economic freedom measure and say and boast about it, or do they ignore it and blank it out? How, how have they used this, Terry? Uh, they're actually amazingly attentive to it. Uh, this has been a, one of the most pleasant surprises for me in moving from the State Department, uh, where I worked for three decades, to the Heritage Foundation, where I can do this index, uh, that we actually uh, get more attention from the presidents, prime ministers, and senior decision makers in foreign countries now here working for this non-governmental organization uh, than I think uh, the State Department can achieve because we're providing a direct comparison uh, that's easily understood for leaders and quite visible. And uh, we have conversations constantly with ambassadors and other uh, senior officials from governments who want to know what they can do to improve their scores in our index. All right. that's uh, We could talk about the United States in the same way, Terry. I think that uh, with tax burden and transparency, well, all right, I set that aside. There are ironies here. But let's focus on Azerbaijan. Uh, for example, I see in the breakout uh, that one category is open markets. Now, my experience is that Azerbaijan is very, very ambitious to be the centerpiece of the new Silk Road, the railroad and shipping everything from East Asia to Europe and back. We know that they're, they built a pipeline to Europe and they're part of the Southern Gas Corridor. So is this going to improve their open markets? Is this going to have influence on their, for example, regulatory burden? Well, sure. Um, and I, one of the things we directly measure is trade freedom um, in countries. And Azerbaijan has a good score on, on trade freedom in our index. And there's still room for progress, though. Uh, their average applied tariff rate is uh, 5%. That's an area where the government has the power in Azerbaijan to make a significant improvement to, to further open the economy to trade. Um, and they have a good score in investment freedom. One area where I think there could be some additional scope for improvement is in the financial sector. Um, the banking sector is dominated by a single large state bank, and uh, a little more competition there would improve access to financing, I think, for the private sector and enable, enable some additional investment in the country. A last thought, Ambassador, because I want to come back to you about this when I ask questions about this when I'm in Azerbaijan. I'll be there within the next 10 days to broadcast, and I hope we have a conversation about this. What, I, what I've witnessed is that the young people all speak English, and the uh, transparency of social media makes them ambitious to be just like New York City. That's what I observed. So can we say that Azerbaijan has a great expectation that they're training their young people uh, to shed the burden of the Soviet state? Can, uh, do you see that in the index? I think that's very well said, and, and that's absolutely what we have seen based on the data that we've collected for the index. And I would just make one final point. Uh, the overall score is important in our index, but even more important is whether a country is improving or losing economic freedom. 
and Azerbaijan is the best in our index in terms of overall improvement, and that's clearly continuing as we go forward. And what that means is that they have a very high possibility for uh, further economic growth, further economic expansion going forward. Um, I'm just as uh, positive as I could be about their prospects for the future. Ambassador Terry Miller of the Heritage Foundation, he directs the Index of Economic Freedom. I'm John Batchelor. This is the John Batchelor Show. <laughs> 